food is not the enemy, your body is. In this video, I'm going to explain to you why food is not actually what's impacting your body. It's your body that's impacting food and in of itself, also all the other symptoms you're experiencing. Uh, my name is Andrew Hanoon. Me and my team have helped over 2,600 women over the age of 45, 50, 60, 70s, and 80s to regain control, to learn how to regain control of their health and their weight with a whole foods, health first, sustainable approach. Um, in this video, I'm going to explain to you um, the difference between, you know, everyone saying avoid these foods, avoid that food, and how your relationship with food should actually be and that it's not actually the food that's controlling or impacting your body it's your body and what to do about that so that you can really eat whatever food and be totally fine with it and how to know how to do that um, so before we dive in it's really important that i give you some background here because a lot of books especially with hypothyroidism or autoimmune will say avoid these foods uh, because they cause this in your body. I'm going to tell you, a banana is a banana. A bagel is a bagel. You know, a hamburger is a hamburger. Like, they're just, before they enter the body, they're just nothing. They, they have no harmful effects on, the, on, on anybody. They're just sitting there doing nothing. A bagel is just sitting on a piece of, on a plate with some butter or something on it, being a bagel. So, it's not that the bagel is dangerous. It's the reaction that happens when it gets inside of our body. That's when things start to occur. So I just want to put that out there because, you know, we start to personificate food and start to give it human characteristics, right? Um, that bagel is evil or um, the those donuts are tempting me, right? It, food is, is just food. Everything else is our mind and physical reaction to the food, right? So if you say my relationship with food, you don't, food is not a person. And so if you start to have a relationship with it, then what happens is you start to deem that thing and you sort of judge yourself towards your behavior towards that thing. And then you start to value yourself on your behavior towards that thing. For instance, I cheated on my diet. Well, if you cheated on your diet, that means that you had a standard to be perfect with your diet. And if you're trying to be perfect with your diet, which will never ever work because life happens, then you're setting yourself up for, for failure because now you're saying, I cheated on my diet because I wasn't perfect, which was impossible standards to begin with. And then because you cheat on your diet, now you're labeling yourself as a cheater or as a failure. And now because you have that new label, you're going to start acting like a cheater or a failure and continue down that path. So what we start to need to stop, what we need to stop doing is trying to have this relationship with food and just have an education on how to treat your body. And if you you eat these foods, this is how you're going to feel, it's fine, but that's that's just how it's going to happen. And if you eat these foods, you're going to feel better, but it's not because of the food, it's because of how your body reacts. And that distinction is very important because then it puts us back in control in saying, well, it's not about what the food does to me, it's about what my body does to the food. And then when you have that understanding, you can start now having a more deeper respect for what your body does and the knowledge of how it does it and then you can make make changes appropriately so that you can be able to have longevity and health and control of your weight while still enjoying food but not feeling imprisoned or hurt by the food okay so let's kind of get a little bit deeper into the science here um a lot of books on, on, like I said, on autoimmune or Hashimoto's or whatever, they they say avoid gluten, avoid nightshades, avoid dairy, avoid nuts and seeds and legumes and tofu and all these different things, depending on the book you read. Um, and they don't necessarily tell you why 
all they say is that it, it's inflammatory. Um, and then, you know, what to do about it? I just eliminate them. Well, okay, then what? <laughs> now you're left with eating a variety of like five different available foods for the rest of your life. I have a completely different philosophy, one that I've used successfully with thousands of clients who were previously diagnosed, a lot of them with Hashimoto's autoimmune conditions and, you know, have had thyroids removed, gallbladders removed, um, his, uh, hysterectomies, um, ovectomies, you name it, right? And so the first thing you have to understand is that when food comes into our body, right, it's, we chew it. So the first process of digestion actually happens in the mouth. And well, actually the first piece of digestion happens when you see and smell food, by the way, because that gets your body ready to start producing the necessary enzymes and proteins to break it down once it gets into your body. So it's your body's trying to plan ahead of time, right? Just like when you ask your guests RSVP so that you can prepare dinner and everything ahead of time. It's the same thing. When you look and smell food, then your body's getting ready to process that food, which is really important. Like that's why when you're going through fast food or when you're just, you know, opening up your prepackaged food and you're chowing it down, it really hinders digestion because it doesn't allow your body to um, digest the to get ready to digest the food, right? And that could cause things like bloating, acid reflux, weight gain, brain fog after you eat, like a brick in your stomach sensation, which is not breaking down the food properly. And so, you know, having like cooking the food and or heating up the food and, and seeing the food ahead of time, you know, that those odors and sights really are important um, in the digestion process. So that's the first step. Second step is when it's in your mouth, you're chewing, you know, you're, you're breaking down your saliva is, is like a barometer. It's like sensing, all right, what, what's in this food? What do I get? What kind of digestive juices do I have to start releasing in my stomach so that I can break down this food later on? Okay, so then you, you break down the food and you swallow it and then it goes into your stomach and then the stomach is producing hydrochloric acid, which in over 90% of people I'm confident in saying it is very deficient and without enough hydrochloric acid in your system, in your stomach, you can't break down the food. You're going to have iron deficiencies. You're going to have protein malabsorption, which means you're going to have an inability to, to put muscle on or nice hair growth, or skin, hair, nails, anything that's required with protein, you're not going to be able to break down a lot of the nutrients, and you're going to have indigested food go into your small intestine, which is going to cause more problems. A lot of people also don't chew their food enough, right? So, you know, you should chew your food at least 40 times, you know. Uh, I, I say you should drink your food, you should drink your solids and chew your liquids. So by the time the food goes in down your throat, this might sound kind of gross, but you should, like it should be in liquid consistency. You should have chewed it really thoroughly and that will make sure that your body does, has to do a lot less work later on to break it down because your, your stomach and your intestine don't have teeth. And the also the saliva will help break it down before it even gets there and you're gonna help prepare your body for digestion during the next phase. Um, with because you're telling it what's going in your body, and um, also with that, you know, once it gets into your stomach, um, if you're stressed and you're eating in a stress state, you know, your body's not going to produce enough hydrochloric acid. And if you don't do that, again, you're not going to get the nutrients, you're not going to break the food down, you're not going to get a, a lot of things that you need from the food. So, even if you're eating really healthy. Are you able to even use the nutrients from that food if you're eating stressed and you're not and you're rushed and you're not doing it properly? You're not chewing your food. No, you're not going to get the benefit from that. So you need to do these are really important. And then after you you chew the food, it's in your small intestine or your stomach. It gets released into your small intestine, and that's when your pancreas releases bile and, and digestive enzymes to break down the protein and the fat. And um, your, you know, your uh, body, your gallbladder re releases some stuff, and you, your your gallbladder releases the bile. Your pancreas releases other hormones to help break down the proteins um, and, and other things and carbohydrates. Um, and in the small intestine, if it has, if when you say leaky gut, it's usually in the small intestine they're referring to. 
you know, um, that's, that's where they're talking about the gluten and the dairy and um, the nightshades and all these different things causing problems is in the small intestine. And this is where it's really important to, to start understanding why it's not food that's the problem, but our bodies. So you've probably all heard of leaky gut, right? Basically, the lining of our gut is paper thin. It's literally like very, very thin layer of cells. It's one, it's one, it's one layer of cell thick. That's it. Just one layers of cell and cells are completely super small. And this is important because that's how nutrients pass through the gut is through these because it's super thin. The, the bad part of that is if there's gaps in between the cells, right? Like, so if this is how it's supposed to be, and a lot of people who are, are sick and ill health, this is where it starts to get like this. And there's like these leaky pieces to it. That's where like undigested food particles and bacterial toxins called LPS and all these things can start to go through those holes, like the leaky gut. And that's where it starts to cause issues, right? And it's, it's the immune system's response to seeing these things that's the issue, right? Not the food itself. So if you didn't have a leaky gut, none of this would really matter because it wouldn't be able to pass through your um, intestinal tract into your bloodstream, right? Because on the other side of your bloodstream is, is where your immune system is seeing the food and attacking it. And, you know, the problem is, um, you know, gluten, for example, looks a lot like um, the protein and gluten that, that caused the problem looks a lot like our brain cells. It looks a lot like some of our joints cells or synovial, synovial fluid cells and when the immune when the immune system sees the gluten and it starts attacking it well it sometimes mistakes that for our joints too so it says huh the the protein on our joints in our brain looks similar to the protein and gluten let's go attack those things and it starts attacking our brain and our and our joints and that's why a lot of people say when I eat gluten, I get brain fog and my joints hurt. So it's not the gluten that's doing it. It's our immune system. That's, that's the problem. But if we heal our gut and we do everything properly in the first place and our gut sealed, we're chewing our food, we're digesting it, we're producing hydrochloric acid because we're not in a stressed state, we're not zinc depleted, or we have all the minerals we need to produce it then we'll start to really produce the hydrochloric acid. We'll break the food down. Our body will release everything it needs to digest it. Maybe a little bit of gluten will pass through, but our immune system's not triggered in the first place or like on alarm phase during the first place. So it's not going to attack us, attack us. So, I mean, up to this point, hopefully what you're seeing is, again, it's not the gluten. It's not the dairy. It's not the legumes. It's not all this. It's the problem. It's the fact that there's like all these balance and checkpoints throughout our whole body that we're not obeying and not respecting. And then eventually once it gets through to the bloodstream, through the um, uh, gut, now we're, we're dealing, our immune system dealing with all these problems because it's, it's somewhere where it shouldn't be in the first place, right? So, I mean, a healthy person is not going to have the same sensitivities to food if they were healthy versus if they're not healthy. Right, and that's important because a lot of women over forty-five, who's our, de or who's the clients we help, um, their their, body, their immune system is already aggravated. They're they're under a ton of stress. They've gone through menopause. They're caring for their parents. They're caring for their kids or their grandkids. They're either in retirement or they're going into retirement. Or there's there's things with their jobs or relationships, their weight. And, and they're in a little bit more of a fragile state post-menopause. So this starts to compound everything. And then they have years of dieting, years of self of subconscious self-sabotage and emotional triggers that they haven't worked through. So it's and, and toxins, in my opinion, are the biggest reason or the primary reason for fat, not calories. They are because our body fats used to store those away from our body, our organs. And so now they have accumulation of toxins that they haven't taken care of. And they're taking these medications were extremely toxic and now it's causing more weight gain. And, and so now they're in a place where their immune system is going crazy and their immune system just needs any excuse to get pissed off. 
and it's using the gluten and the dairy and all these things to do it and it's going crazy. But what we find is that when clients go through our program, they release the toxins, they release the inflammation, they help heal the gut, they get all the nutrients, they learn how to eat, they learn how to sleep, and so they're health, their body's in a healthy place before when they would have eaten gluten and they would have just had this huge reaction to it. Now they're eating gluten and they maybe have an itch here and there and then they're fine again. So it, the same person in a healthy state will react differently than in a non-healthy state to the exact same food. So it's not the food that's a problem, it's the body's state of being. Now, why are these books saying that uh, the problem is, you know, the gluten and the dairy? There are certain foods that are more common to be triggering of autoimmune conditions than others, right? So gluten is a big one, and not because of gluten itself. I think it's more about how we process gluten in, in the United States and Canada than it is about the gluten itself. Because if you go and eat gluten in Europe, their practices for um, glycosate, like in Europe, you're not even allowed to use glycosate, right? Which is a, um, a pesticide that they use here to spray the wheat. And this is usually what's more harmful than the gluten itself is the stuff we're spraying the gluten with. And that's why you can go to Europe and eat bread and have zero reaction and eat bread in the U.S. and now you're flaring up. So just keep that in mind. It's, it's not just the food itself. It's how it's processed, right? I mean, if if animals are eating gluten, you are what you eat. So the animal is has that in its tissues and now you're eating the animal. you got to consider that. This is real stuff. So, you know, that's why it's important to eat food that's well taken care of. And yeah, that might be more costly, but guess what? It's your choice, you know? There's nothing you can do about it. Who cares if you have to pay more, a little bit more to eat healthy? Your medical bills is the number one reason for bankruptcy in the U.S. So I promise you, sickness is a lot more expensive than health. Anyways, that's a little bit of a tangent. Um... What, so the important thing is, yes, there are certain foods that create a, a, an activity in the body um, more that are, people are more susceptible to. And that's gluten and dairy and corn um, and soy and some people um, and all these. And there's a couple more, right? Sometimes nightshades. Uh, that's a lot. I think nightshades are purported to be a lot worse than than they actually are. Um you know, nightshades predominantly people are saying stay away them, stay away from them for rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis. But in my experience, I, I haven't found that to be true. Um, so we're working with clients directly, um, but definitely gluten. I would definitely say gluten free is is important as you start out on your health journey to give your body a chance to heal. And then after, you, if unless you're celiac, and then after you've healed your body and everything that I mentioned in this video then you can start to reintroduce it and see how you feel. Um, then that, that's, that's something you can do. But um, I think it's important too because like you, don't go, like you don't have to go and eliminate all these different triggers, right? The, the point is not to go eliminate all these foods and think they're evil. The point is to focus on getting your body healthy because if you do that, then it will be a lot less triggered by all these different things. Like, did you know that that sensitivity to perfumes, if, like if you're sensitive to perfumes, you get headaches easily with different smells. That's because your body can't detox at all. Like you're, that means your body's really backed up on detoxification. It's because it doesn't have the nutrients and the tools to be able to do it. So that's why consuming certain vegetables is really important. That's why we have our priming phase is to really, really increase that detoxification process naturally in the body through whole foods. So, you know, that's... That's what I think is the bigger picture here is it's it's important to focus on getting your body healthy versus eliminating all these foods. And it's not the foods, it's the body. So what does this mean? Like on our program, our clients can eat soy, our clients, you know, certain kinds. Um, and and I, I, again, I don't believe any food is evil. I think what we have to look more at is how is the food grown? Is the soy non-GMO? Is the soy, like, is it a good quality soy? Because if it is, there's some health benefits associated with that, right? And, 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 and the same triggers don't trigger everybody. So these books are saying blanket statements of avoid all these foods because you, they're just trying to like be as comprehensive as possible for, for the books 
sake. But the reality is I have a lot of clients who probably 50 to 70% of my clients uh, now um, have who work, start working with us have some kind of autoimmune condition. And the reason I say 50 to 70% is because they might have them but be undiagnosed with it. But most people have some kind of autoimmune condition. Oh, sorry, most women over 45 that I've seen. And, and from, with respect to that, like you have to understand that the clients who come see me aren't the ones who are healthy and can step on a treadmill and get some weight off. These are clients who are literally trying everything and inability to lose weight and get their health back. So you can imagine that most of these clients are not in a healthy state. Some are and just want to learn how to sustain that, but most of them aren't. So most of the clients I see have some kind of chronic condition. And they're still eating nightshades. They're still eating soy. They're still eating nuts. They're still eating seeds. Some of them are still eating dairy. But guess what? They release weight quickly and predictably. They get healthier quickly and predictably. And they're able to keep it off when they, you know, apply the system that we teach them. Well, I thought gluten and dairy and all these things were bad for you and I need to eliminate them. No. It's about doing all the other things right so we can heal the body. And when a healthy body is presented with the same stimulus, it reacts differently. Okay? So I hope this answers the question, you know, it has nothing to do with food. Food is not evil. Food is just food. Like this wall behind me is just a wall. If I eat that wood on the wall, I'm going to get... I'm not going to feel good. It's not because the wood is evil. It's because my body doesn't know what to do with it. And if you apply the practices I've taught you in this video, then you will start to improve your health and you will start to improve your well-being. And you'll be able to have exposure to foods and stuff that before would have bothered you that now don't bother you as much or at all. So that's my that's that's my video for today. Um I just I should say this is all for educational purposes only. I'm not curing, treating, or diagnosing anything. You know, speak to your medical doctor before coming off any medical uh, medications or starting any new diet or program or whatever it is. If if you have a good relationship with your doctor, then do that. If not, and then well, most people don't have a good doctor um, or a good relationship with their doctor, I should say. So, um, you know, it's important that you find somebody you can trust an authority. Um, you know, I, I do have my doctor degree in naturopathic medicine, um, uh, but you know, I, yeah, I don't, it doesn't have to be me. You know, I, it's, it's important you find somebody, some kind of mentor or coach. And I want to leave off by saying this, you know, a lot of people feel like I should, they should be able to figure out their health for themselves, right? A lot of people feel like, you know, why should I have to invest or why should I have to find someone to, to learn about how to lose weight and get healthy? Why, can I, why, sh why shouldn't I be able to know this myself and figure this out? Let me ask you a question. When, you're, when you have to take your car to the mechanic, do you ever you know, say, gosh, I'm so stupid. I'm, I'm so useless. I can't, I can't even figure out how to fix my car. Do you say that? No. You happily take your car to the, well, maybe not happily, but you take your car to the mechanic or the dealer, right? Dealership or mechanic, and you pay the mechanic or dealer to fix your car. You don't ask questions. You see the signal go off. Like, okay, it needs service. I need to take it in. You do that, and you're conditioned to do that. But your body is millions of times more complex than a car. A car is child's play compared to, to your body. So then why are you hating on yourself and feeling bad about learning how to use your body when you you would happily pay for someone to take care of your car? You, it doesn't make sense. You know, medical doctors and, and myself, I, I went to naturopathic medical school in Canada. We pay hundreds of thousands of dollars and we spend decades trying to understand the human body and what to do and what to eat and how to, and how to do this. And a lot of people and a lot of doctors still haven't figured it out, even after 40 or 50 years. And you're expecting yourself, you probably work, you have a job, or you take care of your kids or your family. 
and you're expecting yourself to be able to use the limited time that you already have to try and figure out your body? Does that make any kind of sense? And it is the most important piece of your life because without it, you wouldn't even be here. And the state of health of your body determines determines the state of health of everything else in your life, your finances, your relationship with your with your partners, with your kids, your friend, your grandkids, your parents, with your your purpose, with your contribution, with your growth. Come on, uh, let's let's get real, guys. I mean, you're just so that 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 is just so silly. And sometimes. You know, we question the beliefs that we have, except for the beliefs that we refuse to question. Start questioning these things. Because this one belief can stop you from getting help when you really need it and before it's too late. These warning signals, if this was a if your body was a car, most people's warning signals, the dashboard would be lighting up like a Christmas tree. Saying, Hey, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. And here people are trying to research online. You know, trying to get all this free information and try to compile it together into a plan that will work for them. Or they're trying to follow, you know, a, a $29 a month program where someone sends you recipes every, every month. It's not enough. You, your body is, a, is trillions of metabolic processes. It's a wet mess every single minute. Everything's going on. It's insane in here. And don't even consider what's going in your mind. It's, it's okay to ask for help. And the question is, what do you want? Do you want to spend the next 20 or 30 years of your life sick, unhealthy, and trying to figure this out? Or do you want a shortcut? Do you want to figure this stuff out in a matter of a couple weeks to a couple months? Learn it for good and then apply it and never have to worry about this life of year again. What if I could tell you, you can learn how to get rich and be wealthy and never have to worry about it again and go live your life? What if I could tell you, you can have the perfect relationship with your spouse and never have to worry about it ever, you know, and never have to think that you don't have the education or the knowledge and tools to make it better. I can't do those two things yet, but I can tell you that when it comes to your health and your body, if you're a woman over 45, that there is something that can help you and I can help you do that. My team can help you do that. And so if that's something that's interest of you and you and truly resonate with this message, then I, and I would say go to the link in the comments, click on the, our training and watch that and, and get some free information on how to begin your journey. And then if you want some more help after that, you can book a call with one of our coaches. But stop trying to do it yourself. Um, also, if you like this video, then click the like button, click subscribe and comment below to let me know what else you want to hear and how you what you thought of the video. Lots of love, Andrew Hinn. Take care.